morning, good morning. Ooh. All that grass is green again, look. Do you remember all the big panic in the summer where everybody's grass was brown? And they were saying, oh, I need to water my grass. And they didn't, of course they didn't. The silly people. I'm gonna have to. Let me just. Sorry, see if anything's coming. No. How are you? Are you well? I hope so. It's a Monday morning, an autumnal Monday morning. It's been a bit wet. Still got water rationing, as far as I know. I haven't heard that it's been called off. Uh, what else is going on? As you know, we're in the final throes of uh, the money collapsing. We're at the stage where, if they put interest rates up, they'll crash the economy. And if they don't put interest rates up, inflation will crush the economy. So they're caught behind a, between a rock and a hard place. And the more the economy uh, suffers, the more call there is for government support. And the more government support there is, the more money they have to print. And the more consumer price inflation goes up, and so the more that people complain about rising prices and demand government support. Now, the big thing on my agenda between now and the 25th, which is about, what's it today, near left or something? I don't know, the, the minute hand on my watch, because I have an old fashioned watch, is over the top of the date indicator. So I'll have to tell you in a minute or two what the date is, although it'll be on the video. Might be useful, anyway. I've got about uh, 10 days to prepare a talk for the Public Policy Exchange. Now, what is that? That is, uh, I'm sure it's a, pro it's a profit-making body, it's a think tank. They hold a series of uh, debates and for the most part they get the speakers for free. And it's their responsibility to assemble an audience for you. And they charge the audience for uh, the debate, you know, for, for, for uh, dialing in. And it's much easier now because they used to do it in London. You used to have to travel to London and whinge about them for traveling expenses and overnight accommodation, stuff like that. But now, uh, and take a lot of time off work. But now it's all done over Zoom, I think. And so um, it's much easier. And what happens is that every speaker gets 20 minutes, which is a bit like the amount of time you get for a TED talk. Uh, so, you know, optimal amount of time to make your point, not bore anybody and get off. And then uh, there's a general uh, Q&A question and answer. Now, last time I did one of these, it was in London. And it was uh, chaired by uh, Paul Batchelor, who's an academic who's sort of got the ear of the Department of Health and of the Health Select Committee. And he's very uh, left wing in his views, very socialist, very collectivist. And, uh, you know, as a chairman, it took every opportunity to try and not be objective, to argue against the speakers he didn't agree with, to try and cut off the speakers he didn't agree with. Um, and um, so as a result, I don't think that the audience gained much. The audience are... For the, I got the opinion, and you do it because you have you know, what you think is quite an interesting and heated debate. And then afterwards, there are absolutely no questions at all. 
and the audience was predominantly female, predominantly in the late 20s, early 30s age group. And I just got the feeling that they're all there because uh, someone in their department, you know, in some uh, local authority, commissioning group or something said, there's a debate in London on dentistry. Uh, does anybody fancy a day out in London? And that's what, or a trip to London, or an overnight stay in London at, at the authorities' expense. Or some of the junior staff who knew nothing about dentistry were told, uh, look, you know, the first thing you need to do is, is do a lot of CPD, looks good on your CV, um, all you need to do is go along, sit there, collect the certificate at the end, and then come back. And if you learn something, then great. Um, and so you're staring out at this sea of blank faces who have got no idea of what's happened, you know, in the last 30 years or so, 40 years or so. Uh, probably couldn't even name the year the NHS was set up or what it replaced or how it works. So, last time I did one, I vowed never to do one again. I said I would not do one again, you could not drag me there, there's no point trying to have a debate on an unlevel playing field in front of a sea of blank faces. You know, it's the old, was it John Gielgud? who gave up the West End because he said that he's, you know, you're casting pearls before swine. And all these Japanese tourists just coming in. They've been booked a theatre package as part of their stay in London. They are, uh, for the most part, don't understand the language that you're talking and you're giving the performance of your life and what the hell is the point? And so I'm with uh, Gilgood on this. However, there's one thing that can get me motivated and get me back in the saddle and make me want to do this. It's, well, for two things. First of all, it's being done by Zoom, so I don't have to leave the surgery. And secondly, is that uh, one of the other speakers is Dr. Barry Kilcroft. CBE, OBE, whatever it is, I don't know. And, uh, you know, having uh, retired from the Department of Health and got quite a decent job with my dentist as a, a non-executive director, uh, he's not content to let it lie, you know. He's either continuing to uh, fight battles, past battles, or... Um, carry on influencing policy. They just can't, probably a bit like me, you know, I can't blame him, you know. This is me, isn't it? I'm... I'm still going, even though the uh, all the institutions that I employed me have uh, packed up. So, who could turn down a chance to debate against Barry Cockroft? Um, about uh, and the topic which is dental deserts I have to be really careful with that word because I'll, I'll let you into a secret that nobody knows nobody knows it's literally nobody knows this but I was quite good uh, at spelling at school and uh, I, the reason I like spelling is it's either right or it's wrong you can't get 80% on a spelling test unless you've got a 20% of the spellings wrong, okay? So, I was very good at spelling at, at school. And the only word that I ever misspelled in all of the spelling tests I was given was the word desert. And I put it down as dessert. And I've never forgiven myself <laughs> for that one mistake. And not only that, not only that, dessert, I mean dessert. 
a blanche instead of a desert. <laughs> so, dental deserts, what can be done? You know, the whole country is a dental desert. Or a dental desert, as I would say. <laughs> so. <laughs> the gist of my speech is going to be a summary of everything that I've, you know, complained about for the last 40 years. Based on my experience, which was that when I qualified in 81, 82, there were far fewer dentists than there are now. And everyone, anyone could get an NHS dentist anywhere. There were a few private dentists, but uh, almost every dentist was an NHS dentist. And we've gone to a situation now where the BBC has rung round every single practice and every, uh, you know, there, there are almost no NHS dentists now. We've gone from one extreme to the other. Everybody on the NHS and almost nobody private to everybody private and almost nobody NHS. So, how have, we, how have we done that? How have the people who say that they're in charge of NHS dentistry and are charged with the uh, care and promotion of for public health, how have they achieved that? And that's what I'm going to look into. Just turn these noise off. That rattling in the back is my spare tire and I'm going to fix that. But I need a length of um, Threaded, what's it called? Studding bolts to bolt it in. Yeah, so, um, you know, and uh, Mr. Cockcroft, as I always insist on being respectful to him because I don't, you know, uh, think he's an evil person or I don't think he's an idiot. I think he just has idiotic ideas. And I read this morning that there are four types of people, clever people who know they're clever, clever people who don't, idiots who know that they're idiots and idiots who don't know that they're idiots and I think he just falls into the uh, the last category because he's tenure as chief dental officer covers the downfall of NHS dentistry really uh, and when I say he's tenure I mean I would I consider him still to be influential and he's tenured still to be not as effective, but still in place. You know, his legacy is still in place. He's a uh, uh, chief dental officer that was appointed to carry on his work is still in place and has not done anything differently. Uh, and he's still uh, uh, is re-implementing plans that were decided upon when he was in charge, such as, uh, you know, foreign foreign recruitment and uh, increased use of uh, auxiliaries, etc. Expanded duties. So, the question is, how do you make the most of a 20 minute format? And uh, it's very difficult to do it if you're talking. Uh, but, but a 20 minute video, I feel would be much better. And I've asked the uh, organisers, and they said if I want to, in my 20 minutes, play in a 20-minute video, uh, then I, I'm, you know, I can certainly do that. And that's good because uh, what you can do is you can do that in a very slick way. You know, you can put in um, graphics, you can put video in the video, uh, you can. Um, change scene to make a point. Uh, there's no ums and ahs. Uh, 
uh, the, the information can be very concentrated um, and memorable as well. People will tend to memorize and remember a video, whereas if you just do a talk, they might take away a few points if you really ran them over. But a video, people are used to receiving information in video format, aren't they? Aren't they? You know, they're comfortable with videos. So I'm going to see, I'm going to put my video editing skills to the test. It'll be a real test to try and produce something that doesn't look a, a stupid or be completely amateur or C completely backfire. But it should be good fun. And easy for me because I'll do all the hard work in advance and then come the day I won't be nervous other than the technical uh, issue of whether or not the video will play uh, well, you know, and um, technically, and then uh, I'll just sit back and answer questions. But my suspicion is, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a matrix moment for these people. They are really going to, you know, <laughs> they think they're working in an office, and they're going to wake up and find themselves in a pod full of goo. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Uh, how are they going to react to that? Now, I'll tell you how they're going to react to it. Denial. They'll just go straight into denial. They'll go, they'll say that Watson is a, has a long history of uh, failed attempts to try and influence NHS uh, policy. And thank God, because, you know, we're, you know if we were, hadn't been in charge, then... Um, and looking after everything, then things probably would have been a lot worse. Whereas, in fact, that's not true. And in fact, things probably would have been a, a lot better. And in fact, if, if no one had been in charge, things would have been a lot better. But it's, you know, it's a philosophical thing, isn't it? You know, the philosophy of collectivism, which is the idea that... Uh, the, the you know uh, society and our, uh, our greatest and betters the rulers know what's best for us m m better than we do ourselves it's very tempting you know because um, we are sort of brought up like that aren't we you know if a child is he walks out on a ledge then it's up to their parents isn't it to grab them back and say no that's a dumb idea and that carries forward to um, you know sort of paternalistic maternalistic idea of governance when we're older. I think the problem with it is that there is a thing called the uh, wisdom of the common. Uh, the, the, it's the riddle of the common. It's the wisdom of the crowd. The wisdom of the crowd, and that's that thing where, um, you know, it's a guess how many smarties are in a, a, a jar at the fair, and while the guesses themselves are random, you know, someone will put three and someone else will put three million that when you average them all out, they actually always come somewhere pretty close to the actual number. And the idea being that the collective wisdom of the group is what is required. If you could just tap into that and don't, uh, you know, and that's how voting works. Voting works, you've got some pretty extreme extremes in terms of voting. But at the end of the day, the majority of the people will arrive at a consensus which is fairly close to uh, a sensible consensus even though it may not accord with the extreme some extremes of the voters so why does that not work you know when you get to the department of health what's the what's the problem with that And I think the uh, I think the problem is that you just lose the consensus. It's not uh, pluralistic. You know, they don't bring in enough people to get a, a balanced view, and they certainly don't. Uh, the tendency, more recently, is to uh, arrive at a decision, uh, a course of action that you want to take, and then to have a a consultation and then um, do what you were going to do anyway. You know, how many how many consultations change uh, 
the how many formal consultations changed what was going to be done anyway? You know, I would say probably zero, near to zero anyway. Let's let you out. Can't let you out. Sorry, there's only one of you waiting there. Anyway, no, the crowd, uh, the crowd uh, has got the wisdom in this case is the market. It's a bunch of, you know, or thousands or hundreds of thousands of people all making decisions in their own best interests and um, collectively ar arriving at the most efficient use of capital. But of course, there are there are other there are thousands of other people who are dependent on government as a, uh, for as a source of income you know i think uh, thousands you know i think something like uh, i i think if not over 50 but very close to 50% of the population now is in some way dependent upon central government for an income and the uh, Anyway, uh, it's going to be a bun fight, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that you uh, watch it. But for the people who, you know, who want to pay 200 quid to watch it, I suppose they can. But there'll be people just from the corporates, you know, who will just want to weigh what way the wind is blowing. And people who just, um, you know, like the um, Association of Dental Practices or something, who will just... Uh, the, their job is to sort of advance, you know, lobby groups on behalf of the corporates. They'll, they'll. Their job is to just take in all the intelligence, to listen to everything, and then, and then put it through their AI and uh, try and distill it down into some sort of um, recommendations. You know, make sure that their money stays safe. Right. Okay. I'll um, might see you tomorrow. Talk soon. Bye.